Hi guys, Jeff at Slavens Racing. And this video is about the Kenda Gnarly front tire. I think they only make this in one size, uh, which is 90-90-21. It's definitely what this one is. You can check out our website. I don't think there's any other sizes available. Sorry, this tire's kind of dirty because I just got back from a ride. And that's what happens when you ride them. Uh, but they, their website, like almost all the tire manufacturers' websites, totally sucks when it comes to product information. They group the front tires and the back tires together. Uh, the back tire, uh, gnarly, is a gummy. This is not a gummy. Uh, so their information sucks. I looked over, around on the internet trying to find some reviews, some tests. Didn't really find much. Uh, there are some tests on the rears, but not the front. And I've overlooked this tire. We've had this in stock for quite a while. And um, I, I, you know, I just haven't gotten to it yet. There's so many tires on our shelf that, uh, and so many tires out there on the market that it's difficult for me to get them all tested. And I probably never will, to be honest with you. But anyhow, uh, first and foremost, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with this tire. Uh, you know, my go-to tire is the Bridgestone M59. I think most of you guys know that. The 59 is definitely our most popular tire, period. It's a huge seller for us. It's a great all-around front tire. It does everything well. Yeah, but it's, you know, those other tires that do things, that, it, that do things better than it does. But uh, it's just a great, versatile, all-around tire for, for trails. And a lot of guys use them for racing as well. But what I, this is the 59, this is the Gnarly. Kind of hard to tell them apart. I think the Kenda engineers uh, did some testing on the 59, decided to copy it. But who knows? Anyhow, the difference between the 59 and, and the Gnarly is that the, the Gnarly is, has a more substantial carcass to it. It's a three ply carcass. I'm pretty sure that the 59 is a two ply. Uh, that extra ply makes this tire. Well, one thing it really does that I, that I really like is it's more compliant. It, uh, it absorbs the smaller rocks and roots and square edge stuff better. It, you know, it, it just absorbs them. And, you know, there's little, some smaller root sections that I ride regularly that uh, it's almost like they're not even there. It's, it's almost like you did a, uh, another small upgrade to your suspension. And this bike already has excellent suspension. It has the Slavens Mule cartridge system in it. Uh, you know, this bike, uh, for our conditions, handles exceptionally well. And this tire makes it feel even better. So. I, I kind of contributed that to two things. One is a little bit softer rubber compound. They call this a medium compound tire. Uh, it's uh, about a 65 durometer, whereas most front tires, uh, you know, motocross front tires are in the 75 durometer range, even up to 80. So they're, they're a harder rubber compound. So this little bit softer rubber compound combined with uh, uh, more, a better carcass or more substantial carcass is what I think is what makes it absorb the rocks and roots better. That carcass will also give it more puncture resistance and should make the tire last longer. Uh, 59s at around uh, 150 to 200 miles, they start, the carcass starts to degrade on them. And then at that point, I put more. Air, I increase the air pressure uh, because the carcass starts to get soft. I have not felt that on this tire yet, although I have changed the pressures around, which I'll explain here in just a second. So when I first uh, mounted this up about a month ago, um, so this one's got uh, this one has about uh, 200, hour, 200 miles on it, excuse me, because I put it on the same time as I did the rear uh, JX8. Anyhow, um, 
it has not developed that squirmy feel. But when I first put it on, I ran 11 PSI on it and I was doing tighter, more technical stuff, no higher speed things. Uh, but I did ride it in the rain the, the very first day. Uh, and I rode it in very magic dirt conditions. And now I'm riding it in extremely dry, slick, dusty, uh, kind of miserable conditions. But uh, it performed really well those first few rides because I was doing lower, more technical stuff. But then when I got into some faster rides, uh, when I'd stuff it in the corners, it kind of gave me a vague feeling that I didn't like. So I increased the tire pressure from 11 to 13, and that feeling went away. Now, I think if you're a high-level racer guy, uh, you know, doing off-road races, that, you know, this tire probably is not for you. Uh, I talked to Randy Hawkins. He runs the Ampro Yamaha team, which is a very dominant team this year in the GNCC circuit. And uh, there's, I believe they're sponsored by Dun Dunlop now, but they used to be sponsored by Kenda. And he said that their racers did not use this tire. They thought it had excellent traction in the rocky conditions, but in the high speed stuff, and those guys, I mean, their level of high speed is definitely higher than most of our levels, uh, us mortals level of high speed. Uh, in the high speed sections, they felt like it rolled. Of course, I don't know what they had in there. They run mooses, and I don't know what moose they had, but that could have affected as well. But for the average guy, I'd say this tire is damn good under all conditions. You know, it might not be the best if you ride nothing but high speed stuff. Um, it probably wouldn't be my choice for that. But for most trail conditions, I think this tire is pretty hard to beat. I don't know the price point. Sorry, guys, I forgot to look it up before I started this video. But, you know, it, it's, it's nothing outrageous. It's a, uh, probably in the 70 or maybe $80 range. I don't really know. Uh, as you can see here, I do run tubeless, which I run, you know, there's the two tubeless things. Uh, I, I use tubeless on all my bikes, and I definitely think it's the best way to test tires because I can fluctuate the pressure. Uh, a lot of tires, front and rear, you know, will work really well at one pressure and then really bad at another pressure. So I think it's very important to be able to change the pressures around and let people know what pressures work best. I'm not a moose person because, you know, with mooses you're stuck at one pressure. Uh, that does not work well for me for testing tires. Also, mooses, if you run like a regular moose, not a softer moose, uh, they're too stiff. I mean, they have a, you know, 13, 14 PSI feeling to them. That's just too much for most tires in the rocks. And especially on the back tires, that just really downgrades the traction. Uh, let me think here, guys. So just to review, three-ply carcass, good for puncture resistance and uh, longer service life of the tire. Same tread pattern as an M59, which I think is a plus. Uh, it's not chunking so far. Like I said, this one's got about 200 miles on it. I'm going to run it for another 100. But I don't think it's going to chunk. It doesn't look like it's, you know, it's not really showing signs of chunking. It's wearing well. It absorbs the rocks and roots well. Uh, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. Overall, I'm very impressed with it. So. Tires are something you just need to try and see if they work for you. I think that this is a good choice, and I think uh, I'd like for you, some of you guys to try it and give me some feedback. I'm going to be handing a couple of these out to some of my tester guys and see how it works out for them. So far, I'm the only one testing it, but I'll, I will get some other testing feedback and possibly make a, another video, a long-term video down the road. But like I said, I'm going to run this about another 100 miles, and I'll be done with it. So far, so good. Uh, it's a very impressive tire. I think you should give it a shot for trail riding. And, uh, but the most important thing I'd like you to do is get out and ride. I'd also appreciate if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right below in the, the video screen here is a subscribe button you can click on. That helps us out. We're trying to help you out by giving you uh, 
information so you can make good decisions on on your purchases and so i'd appreciate if you'd help us out a little bit and push that subscribe button also like us on facebook and whatever it is you do on instagram so i don't know i don't look at instagram um, but check us on that one as well but back to, back again to uh, get out and do some throttle therapy there's nothing better than throttle therapy it keep your helps you keep your head on straight my wife sometimes almost kicks me out of the house and tells me to go ride if I'm getting a little cranky. So that's all for now, guys. Get out and ride. Hi, guys. It's just an addendum. Uh, I finally get this tire up to the 300 miles that I mentioned I, I was going to ride it to. And I uh, just wanted to give you one last little wrap on this. On this tire, plus one of my testers uh, has put some miles on one and gave me some good feedback. Uh, but let's start with uh, with this tire right here. Uh, so, it, it, like I said, it's got 300 miles on it now, which is a lot for me. I usually take front tires off around 250, maybe three at the most, uh, for our conditions up here. And plus, once they get rounded, once this part of the knob gets rounded, uh, you know, they start losing their grip. But this tire is still working pretty damn good. Uh, I, again, I, I just don't have anything bad to say about this tire. It really works well in a lot of places. I'm not saying it's the my number one choice. I'm not really sure what that is right now. I guess it's still the M59. That's still kind of our gold standard, the M59 Bridgestone. Uh, but this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a damn good tire, and I think you guys should try it. And especially if you're wanting more puncture, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're wanting more puncture resistance and a little pleasure ride, you're going to get this over the M59. Uh, you can see that this tire here, you know, it's starting to show some signs of the side knobs coming apart. It's kind of torn off part of that one. And you know, here's some really, I'm trying to give you some good close up pictures here of what it looks like. There's really not much cracking on it. Uh, there's a little bit of a crack on this knob right there. You know, this knob will probably eventually come off if you rode it four or five, six hundred miles, but it depends on what your goal is. If it's mileage, then go buy a damn hard tire and just deal with it. If you want performance, then you, there's a cost for that. And uh, the cost is tires don't last as long. So, and on the front, I'm all about performance. I can live with kind of a crappy tire on the back, but on the front, when, when they start dropping out from under you when, when you don't expect them to, when they become unpredictable, you know, that's what I really look for in front tires is predictability. And uh, But when they become unpredictable, uh, and now, then you start turning the throttle the wrong way, at least I do. You know, that makes me tense and tight, and, and I don't have any confidence in the tire and uh, then I turn the throttle the wrong direction. So to me, a few extra bucks on a good front tire is not a big deal. Changing them often is not a big deal. Um, I know you're thinking, well, you get them at dealer cost. Well, profit margin on, on tires is absolutely horrible. The difference, difference between my cost and your cost is very, very small. And so that's not even a deciding, deciding factor. So anyhow, guys, uh, get this wrapped up. I just wanted to give you this last final review on this. One of my test riders gave me a thumbs up. Thought it was a damn good tire. I think it's a damn good tire. Uh, I, it's not my choice for high speed. I would not use it for fourth, fifth, sixth gear stuff where you're racing really hard in, at those in those gears at those speeds. But for trail riding, I think this is a darn good tire. And so. It's all for now.